A warm welcome to your Barbados Debate Evening News Update for Wednesday, February 9. The Supreme Court is to hear a constitutional motion to determine whether the new Senate is properly constituted. Former Attorney General Adriel Brathwick QC has brought the action to resolve what he describes as controversy over whether the Senate can function with only 18 of the 21 senators currently installed. Brathwick's attorneys Garth Patterson QC and Michelle Russell filed the motion this evening. Brathwaite says the issue goes to the heart of democracy and he's compelled to cease the court's intervention. He made it clear that he was acting in his capacity as a former attorney general and as a private citizen who is deeply committed to the notion that government must be in line with the country's laws. He insisted the action was not brought on behalf of any political party with which he was previously affiliated. Brathwaite was a former member of the Democratic Labour Party. Health Minister Ian gooding edge reports that the backlog of discharge certificates for persons in home isolation who have recovered from COVID-19 has been cleared. He says an automated system has been put in place to rectify the problem and to stay up to date. Last Wednesday, February 2nd, the backlog was 3,357 and went to approximately 4,400. On Monday, February 7th, the backlog of patient discharge certificates was reduced to 2002. I'm pleased to report that the backlog was cleared yesterday. This was due to the collaborative efforts of the Ministry of Health and Wellness Information Technology Department, the polyclinics and the home isolation team. I wish to thank them for their continued commitment and support during this difficult period. We are current with the patient discharge certificates and we've put a plan in place to remain current. That plan includes an interim automated discharge system, which will allow discharge certificates to be generated automatically and sent via email. The permanent solution for the automated system in the Ministry of Health and Wellness Information System, known as SHAPE, is being expanded to fully reflect an integrated patient management module. The current system also takes into consideration persons diagnosed at the three private labs that are currently doing PCR tests. The public is reminded to provide accurate email addresses to ensure smoothness of discharge from isolation. The new chairman of the Barbados Hotel and Tourism Association, Rene Copping, is clearing the air about the BEST program, set up by government to assist players in the sector affected by the downturn in business resulting from the impact of the COVID-19 pandemic. Describing the policy initiative as a lifeline for many hoteliers during the height of the pandemic, Coppin says the program has dispersed over $48 million, which was used by tourism officials to re-engage staff. The way that the program was, was structured was that you could either do a grant and you would have to match the funds provided to you through the BEST program to re-engage your staff or for the transformation initiatives that you were undertaking, or you could take, um, the government would take out a preference share in your business which you could then repay as business started to return. So, so far only $48 million have been dispersed through that best fund, not 300 million as has been loosely thrown around. Um, 48 tourism entities became involved in that project and that program, sorry. 21 of which were hotels, four attractions, six restaurants, five water sports operators, three retail and souvenir shops, um, two destination management companies, one round handling company, one car rental, one nightclub, one sports entity, one villa management company, one company in tours and transfers, and one company that is in marketing for a total of 48. So as I said today, just over $48 million have been dispersed and is projected that over the next two um, years or so that there will be further funds dispersed. The COVID-19 pandemic has triggered worrying issues for healthcare workers, including symptoms of depression, suicidal thinking, and psychological distress. That's according to Director of the Pan American Health Organization, Dr. Carissa Etienne. During her weekly press briefing today, she expressed concern that a high number of workers have been affected. We've been closely tracking the pandemic's effect on our region's health workforce. We've released a new report this week and that describes the challenges that our frontline workers have faced and effective policies to help protect them. This data complements other studies that PAHO has led on the mental health of our health workers. Today, I want to share a few lessons and key takeaways from these analyses. 
The first is that, especially at the beginning of the pandemic, health workers were caught off guard and our health systems were unprepared to support them. Doctors, nurses, and other frontline health, health workers saw more patients and worked longer hours than ever before. They were vulnerable to a new virus and without sufficient masks, gloves, and other personal protective equipment suffered high rates of COVID infection. In the latest COVID-19 update, the Basso Santos Public Health Laboratory recorded 586 new COVID-19 cases, 266 males and 320 females from the 2,219 tests conducted on Tuesday. The cases comprised 98 persons under the age of 18 and 488 who were 18 years and older. There were 178 people in isolation facilities, while 12,654 were in home isolation. A 53-year-old unvaccinated man passed from the virus at the Queen Elizabeth Hospital's Accident and Emergency Department on Tuesday. As of February 8th, the death toll of the COVID-19 pandemic stood at 289. There's regional and international news after this short break. Hi. I am Onika. I am a mother, I am a daughter, and I am a wine educator. When vaccines first came on the scene last year, I was really apprehensive about getting vaccinated. I was worried about taking a drug that I felt was experimental, so at first, I really wasn't about it. I decided to get vaccinated. I had to acknowledge the fact that I am asthmatic, and my son is also asthmatic. I have a career in wine. We depend on our senses, and I decided that I did not want to risk it for being afraid of taking a vaccine. Coronavirus has affected everyone around the globe. And keeping this in mind, make sure that your decision is not a selfish one and that you're thinking of the benefits of the whole. Let's roll up our sleeves and get back to living. To regional happenings in Trinidad, the government intends to proclaim the Public Procurement and Disposal of Public Property No. 2 Regulations 2021 Act in March. And Minister of Finance Colin Abrams says procuring entities will have to bring themselves up to speed as they expect full compliance. We get the details from TTT News. As he piloted debate on the bill in the Senate on Tuesday, he said the ministry has asked entities within the government system not to create additional bodies to manage the responsibilities with respect to this legislation, as the question of additional human resources was raised. Because it's a typical reaction to something new for public bodies to say, all right, we have to create an entire procurement unit to um, manage our responsibilities. What we've asked them to, to do is to look within their existing establishment and those persons who can do the job, use them. So that we expect that when we proclaim this, that every public entity will just have to come on board. On the international front, Prime Minister Boris Johnson says he intends to end the legal obligation for persons in England to self-isolate if they test positive for COVID-19 later this month, when he sets out the government's strategy for living with the disease. More in this report from Reuters TV. Provided the current encouraging trends in the data continue, it is my expectation that we will be able to end the last domestic restrictions including the legal requirement to self-isolate if you test positive, a full month early, Mr yeah. Speaker. Yeah. At the height of the lockdown restrictions in 2020, my constituent, who's worked for the NHS for over 30 years, was diagnosed with a tumour on her spine. Whilst in hospital, undergoing painful surgery, her family obeyed the rules and didn't visit her. Mr Speaker, in the last few minutes, a photo has emerged of the Prime Minister in Downing Street on the 15th of December 2020, surrounded by alcohol, food and people wearing tinsel. It looks a lot like one of the Christmas parties he told us never happened. So for the sake of my 
constituent and the sacrifices she made, will the Prime Minister be referring this party to the police, as it's not one of the ones already being investigated? Yeah. That's news, but for the very latest, you can visit us at www.barbadistoday.bb. You can also subscribe to our e-paper, email updates, or like us on Facebook, and sign up for our breaking news alerts via WhatsApp. We're also on Izumi Media and Bus Terminals, as well as Screenplay at Supermarkets and Gas Stations near you. You can also hear us on Capital Media HD, 99.3 FM.